Hey, I'm Steve, also known as Terramantis, and this is my channel Vitcha. In this video, we're going to cover 10 things that you may or may not know about Destiny. We'll brush over topics based in lore, game mechanics, and things that are just simply fun to know. But all these Destiny topics are either obscure or widely unknown. The topics will get more difficult as we go. Remember to play the game or if you learn something new, you hit the like button. But if you already knew everything, don't feel bad for one second about also hitting the like button. Alright, let's get started. Number 10 might come as no surprise to many of you, it's something you might think of as common knowledge. But it wasn't until dozens of hours of gameplay under my belt that I discovered that you can destroy the weapons on enemy dropships. This can be easily overlooked considering shooting the weapons on ships is one of the only things in Destiny you can harm without numbers to indicate the amount of damage inflicted when shot. Numbers or not, with enough bullets pumped into the mounted weapons, they'll get destroyed. One more thing you might not know is that right next to the front-mounted turrets of a fallen ship is another destructible armament. This can also be destroyed and it's the compartment that rains down all those annoying grenades. When looking at the shader aptly named 18327496-64703388, you might just think to yourself, hmm, that's stupid. Well, what you may not know is that if you enter these numerical codes into a standard RGB color palette, one will correspond to blue, while the other represents yellow. It's not surprising then that yellow and blue are the colors the shader applies to your character as well, but one more interesting fact is that when these same numbers are entered into a global positioning system as coordinates, the longitude and latitude land somewhere in Sweden, where, coincidentally, the national flag is also blue and yellow, just like the shader. In other words, <laughs> Number 8 was born of a question. How the hell does a Vex Minotaur still pursue me even after I've blown its face off? Well, what you may not know is that in addition to the red eye in the center of the Minotaur's head, those other two red orbs on their chest act as optics as well. In other words, Vex Minotaurs have three eyes. For the next one, you may have noticed when on Mars, there's a part of the ruined city underground with a ticket booth, turnstiles, subway trains, and what looks like to just be a terminal. This section of the map is actually labeled Tharsis Junction. Well, what you may actually not know is that Tharsis Montes is a currently named plateau in the western hemisphere of Mars with several volcanic mountains. This section of Mars is home to the largest volcanoes in the solar system, named Arcea, Pavanus, and Ascarius Mons, or collectively known as the Tharsis Montes. The tallest volcano on Mars, Olympus Mons, is often associated with Tharsis but is actually located on the western edge of the region. So why do we care about the Tharsis Mountains? Well, it's actually going to be extremely important in a different topic, but... Let's worry about that for later. On to the next one. Normally, when you're in the first person perspective, you're able to look down and see your character's leg. No big deal, right? Well, what you may not know is that for whatever reason, you're able to damage yourself by shooting yourself in your character's leg if you're standing in water. It doesn't matter if the water is up to your ankles or waist. With the right mixture of your leg added to water and bullets equals death. Number 5 might not be outwardly apparent at first gaze, but upon close inspection it will become clear as day. So did you know that thralls, those swarming, screaming mess of hive claws are actually the same creature as the towering hive ogre? When you look at them, the two creatures have striking similarities in their anatomy. Spikes on their shoulders, bulging brain thing, bone protrusions on their leg, same stupid look on their face. They're basically the same creature, one just larger than the other, and, you know, Laser beams, there's, there's that. Oh yeah, and the official Destiny art book says, ogres are corrupted and infected thralls. So I guess if you want to take their word for it, you can, you can do that. For the next one, you may have noticed that exos have numerical values attached to their names as a suffix. For example, Cade 6, the Hunter Vanguard, or Lakshmi 2, the future war cult representative. Well, what you may not know is that Banshee 44, the gunsmith, has a very interesting piece of idle banter. Banshee will often comment by saying, How many times have my system been wiped? 41, 42, 43? 
This bit of commentary in combination with the gunsmith's name, Banshee44, highly suggests that the number attached to an EXO's name is an indicator of times their systems have been wiped. Now speaking of NPCs in the tower, Commander Zavala, the Titan class Vanguard trainer, will often spout random lines of dialogue just like any other NPC. But what you may not know is that one line in particular is a paraphrased quote taken from The Art of War, written by the Chinese military general Sun Tzu. This line fits well with the themes of destiny as Commander Zavala will say, Regard your soldiers as your children, and they will follow you into the darkest valleys. In the previous 10 Things video for Destiny, I discussed how during development, Bungie was influenced by From Software's RPG, Dark Souls. Well, there's yet another homage to Dark Souls and Destiny that I left out, the hunter exotic helm Acleophage Symbiote. When inspected, this helm can be seen pulsating with what appears to be a parasite attached to the mask. Additionally, the item description reads, They told me it would eat away my thoughts and leave me full of light. This helmet and description is a direct reference to one of the possible story outcomes for the character Solaire in Dark Souls. In Dark Souls, Solaire is searching for a light, to be grossly incandescent. And in one specific course of events during Solaire's quest to find this light, he is instead found with a parasitic creature attached to his head called a Sunlight Maggot, and Solaire has gone mad. Now speaking of Souls influences, it's no secret that every Souls game takes place after the fall of a once great civilization. This is also true of Destiny and its timeline taking place after the Golden Age, which was preceded by an event known as the Collapse. Well, what you may not know is that the Souls franchise has an overarching theme of life being cyclical and time repeating itself over and over across eons. I believe this to be true of Destiny as well. There are specific nuances hinting to this mentality throughout the game. The first piece of evidence related to this concept can be seen in the intro cinematic cutscene of Destiny's opening. As the astronauts are walking across the surface of Mars, the mountains in the background can be seen shifting. Wait, let's see that one more time. It's almost as though each new formation represents a new cycle of time. This is interesting especially when considering it would take millions of years for mountain formations to vary so drastically. Remember when I was talking about the Tharsis volcanoes on Mars? Well, to give a sense of scope and time, scientists have estimated the depths of Olympus Mons, and judging from the crater size frequency distributions of the Caldora floors, the craters range in age from 350 to 150 million years ago, with all of them formed within 100 million years of one another. And that's just a single formation. The second piece of information can be found in the Grimoire. One entry pertains to the events that led up to the collapse, and has to do with the AI warmine Rasputin. In short, after Rasputin detected an anomaly in deep space, the warmine initiated two very specific emergency protocols, one called Voluspa, and the other Yuga. These protocols are significant to the theory of time repeating itself because Voluspa is a Norse poem telling the story of the creation of the world and its coming end. And Yuga, according to Hindu cosmology, is the concept that life in the universe is created and destroyed every 4 to 8 billion years. These concepts, when applied to the opening cinematic, provide enough logical evidence to why the mountains in the background shift so sporadically. The scene is subtly conveying multiple variations in the cycle of the universe. As an added bonus, the cryptarch will occasionally say the line, A wind age, a wolf age. A presentiment of the collapse? And this line is a partial excerpt from Voluspa as well. The final piece of evidence is The Stranger. One grimoire card which describes a scene through the eyes of The Stranger has many of these same themes of repeating time. She states, I stand here now and now and now many times. This view, this ground. This is where I always choose to stand. I put my feet where I put my feet before and where I will again and I look at the sky. There are always the dead. Their names shift. Sometimes I think I see myself among the dead. This lends to the mentality that the stranger has experienced the same point in time over and over, and the part about the name shifting suggests the characters in this great cosmic cycle may change, but the stage is always set. The actor who fills the same role may alter, but they always play the same part. Another piece of information can be found in the stranger's pulse rifle that she gifts you. The item description strongly implies she is from the future, not the past like some legends suggest. So why is this important? Well, this EXO is known for meddling in the affairs of destiny and fate. Her grimoire card refers to the stranger as an anomaly and states that she dissolves in and out of the world, intangible and elusive, as if she is a visitor from somewhere beyond. But there are those who maintain that her interventions save their lives, or averted unspeakable catastrophes. I believe she is doing the very same intervention with you, the player character. 
The stranger is there at the very first cutscene watching over your escape from the Fallen. Again, she appears throughout the game to guide you along a very specific path. Guardian, I know what you're about to do. It's brave. But there are enemies out here you would not believe. Out where? First from the moon to Venus. Go down and face the hive. And if you live, come find me. Then to the Black Garden. Have you heard of the Black Garden? We've heard the legend. Almost as though she is overseeing your course of action, attempting to manifest your destiny. I believe this is why the game is actually called Destiny. Slap on the tagline, become legend, and it all starts to make sense. It doesn't matter who you are, only what you will become. But hey, it's just a theory. I'm <laughs> gonna.